Hi, I'm John Shea. I uh, was born April 14th, 1948, North Conway, New Hampshire. Uh, I'm an actor and a director and uh, currently a writer. I have an ideal about perfect happiness that I don't know if we can ever achieve in real life. Uh, uh, the ideal of it is, is a, sp a combination of spiritual and uh, mental tranquility, a total peace, total oneness, total being in the moment. You remember I'm a child of the 60s, so uh, there is this uh, image that I have of never losing your cool, being completely centered, and, uh, and just allowing things to flow naturally. I, I really don't have a lot of fear. I don't have fear dying, for example, which I know a lot of people fear. For some reason, Death and I have become old friends. I don't fear that. That's usually the greatest fear. I don't allow a lot of fear into my life for whatever reason. I'm afraid of fear. Now uh, I've been writing screenplays. And uh, I, I think any writer who has the ability to create three-dimensional characters and set them in dramas that allow us to learn something and inspire us, move us to insight, those to me are the most amazing artists of all. And uh, I have a feeling that um, you know, as I get older, I'm going to aspire more to do that. The thing that I'm trying to work on to get rid of in myself is any timidity, dishonesty. I think I, the thing that I, I think that I like least in other people is is uh, our dishonesty. People who are liars, people who I can't trust. I'm hoping somebody would feel for me that I would try to engage them as an as a human being first, no matter who they were. I don't identify with any historical figures. There's not one person in history that I feel really akin to. I find it really hard to lie these days. I used to be a really good liar. I lied my whole childhood. I was a really good liar to my parents. What did you do last night? Nothing. You know? Did you go out? No. Have you been drinking? Are you kidding me? I, I, I grew to be such a good liar that I became an actor. I was a professional liar. I get paid to lie. Uh, so I try not to lie too much now in my real life. I could work too hard. Once I get going on something, I can just go and go and go and go and go. When I played football, I was the guy who was in the, I was a lineman. I used to be able to push the sled, you know, a hundred yards. I keep on going. I just never say die. So I think that it's like this work ethic that I have, and I've had to learn sometimes to cut back so that I can be uh, more playful. Prudence is, is uh, a, a kind of form of cowardice, I think, sometimes, you know. I, I, again, I, I tend to be more impulsive and want to go instinctually toward things, and I think people who are too prudent never experience the thrill of spontaneity. I'd, I'd like to be a healer. I'd, I'd love to have the genius that some people have to be able to heal people. Recently I had a friend who got very, very sick, and I thought what a great talent it would be to be able to put your hands on this person and heal that person. To be able to take energy and somehow summon it from the cosmos and put it through your fingers and hands and touch them and heal them. Well, I went through a divorce about five years ago. I lost my homes in New York, I lost money, you know, I lost you know, a lot of material things, and I had to learn powerful spiritual lessons about the letting go of things. I found that I felt despair when I was trying to hang on to those things that I couldn't hang on to. And the minute I let go of those things, oh God, I was free. What happens to me is that ideas come to me, and then I think that's a good idea, and then I'll follow through and make that idea come through, but right now I don't have any, any goals like that. I was thinking of my grandmother's uh, last word before she died. She looked at us all and she said, enjoy. You hear it? What challenges me most, I think, is, is, the, is keeping the energy flowing so that um, I'm not overwhelmed with things and I just uh, can handle everything that's coming at me. Well, I'm pretty happy almost all the time. The only time I feel uh, that I'm not happy is when I lose touch with myself. And, and I lose touch with myself if, I try, if I'm taking on too many responsibilities, if too much is coming down on me. And I lose that easy Tai Chi, that easy flow, and I get stressed out, then I'm not happy. 
the most fun about being an actor or a director is that um, no two days are the same. Every day is completely different. And uh, the energy that everybody else brings to you is always a surprise. So what happens is you surround yourself with creative people. You enter into that circle of creative people when you show up at work and stuff happens. There's a kind of friction, a kind of fusion of uh, energies that creates a surprise. Every day is different. I think my sense of humor, I think it keeps me really sane, you know? Being able to laugh. My father had a great laugh. He had a kind of laugh that was really infectious and I can remember my father laughing so hard that he would fall on the ground on his hands and knees. I still love to laugh like that. When I was uh, in school, I have to say, uh, my greatest hero was Eugène Delacroix. Delacroix was a great French painter. He was one of the first great romantic painters. And what I loved about Delacroix, I, I also studied painting when I was a kid, and I painted portraits and things like that. And, um, he was a great painter, but he was a storyteller. He told them on canvases. Uh, but he also kept journals, and those journals uh, chronicled uh, all of his life experiences. And to this day, I keep a journal, in having been inspired by Delacroix. Negative energy. I think you can tell if somebody is negative or coming from a dark place or a, or a light place in about one second. And these days I'm very sensitive to that. And if somebody's coming from a dark place or a negative place, I have no time for them in my lives. Uh, when I was at, uh, in college, I went to Bates College, and I was sneaking into the back of the theater to get my fake ID so I could buy beer for the guys on the football team. And the head of the theater saw me and said, here, read this. When we finished the reading, she said, okay, you got the part. I said, what were you? It turns out that it was much ado about nothing. It was the, original, it was the first reading of a play. That she was missing her leading man, and she offered me the role. And I, I accepted it. I took the challenge, and it changed my life. I live by a series of hexagrams that guide me, I think. Uh, not one particular motto, because not one motto is appropriate for every day and every situation. I have to say that I'm constantly inspired by uh, the 64 mottos, if you will call them that, that are found in the I Ching, which is the Chinese book of changes, which helps guide my every day. Good food. Yummy food, food I cook. I'm a very good uh, barbecue chef. Eat outside, the caveman in me likes that. <laughs>